so okay great uh, and uh, very good afternoon and welcome back for uh, the second session uh, the pre placement session of course uh, which is happening on c programming and we are trying our best okay to just revisit uh, the concepts uh, of uh, c programming language and uh, we are trying our best to improve the skill sets so last uh, session uh, we have spent a time on the basic fundamentals of C language, including the data types and uh, operators and uh, the control statements, which ranges from E, E, L, switch and the loops, obviously, uh, is a part of and control statements and while loop to while loop and uh, for loop and the utility of an break statement and the utility of the continue statement. Uh, and then we uh, parallelly we also have spent a time on doing some uh, programming stuff and uh, okay just, just uh, trying to understand uh, how uh, and in what best manner we can really make use of all these uh, features for uh, handling the given situation and proposing first a logical solution and mapping that logical solution in form of a programming solution so today's session the focus is on a function and uh, we all know uh, that the function is one of the very uh, characteristic rather is one of the appealing function uh, feature rather okay as far as the c programming language is concerned because okay c is c programming language is regarded as function oriented programming language Every C program is regarded as a collection of a function. And if we want our program to be executable, so obviously we need to also include a main function because the main function is entry point of an execution. And uh, as far as a function is concerned, my dear friends, everyone knows, okay, it believes in a very simple philosophy of divide and conquer. And uh, the world is believing in the team spirit. So why if, uh, an individual should doing everything and everything it is always better to have a team and then okay we can divide the responsibilities and everyone will be made responsible for some task and then okay that is how uh, okay the the, the work uh, will get divided and the task becomes simple and obviously it will further improve the speed of uh, completion and everything and everything. so that was the thought process behind uh, the introduction of the concept of a function divide the task into smaller tasks and write a function for each of it. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, why to put everything uh, inside a main function, rather, okay, we can have a small function made responsible for looking after one particular subtask. So uh, as it's basically, okay, visible in a picture, you don't have to do everything. My dear friends, even Batman had Robin. So everyone requires a buddy. So main function also requires some okay so complementing and complementary function and uh, supporting function. So that is in fact a thought uh, behind. So uh, diligence is immediate attention to a uh, to an task uh, assigned the assigned task. So you you delegate the task and okay you uh, show believe in a trust and you show and trust and your task will get uh, completed. So again it is uh, delegating the responsibility. Now we have uh, a broad classification of a function going as uh, a library functions and uh, user defined functions. And we are right now not interested in playing with the library functions. And we know that a library function is something uh, which is uh, made readily available for the purpose. It is a part of an C library and it is basically an extensive library. The C is offering to us and we have variety of functions scattering to the uh, operations which revolves around and mathematical functions which revolves around character processing which revolves around uh, the string processing which revolves around playing with the memory and allocating the memory dynamically and a lot many so it's an enormous list which uh, is there and as and when the need arises we will be using the library function or inbuilt function and only the take care to be taken is as and when we are planning to make use of this library function we need to include an appropriate header file so everyone knows okay so when it comes to an a printf and scanf we, we normally okay include uh, hash include stdio.h uh, mathematical related functions agar use karne to we include uh, math.h and, and so on and so forth but right now the focus is on user defined function 
so if we are planning to propose our function in 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 a program so how would be uh, that made possible and how we will be doing that so uh, two things are recommended you need to uh, really specify the function declaration which is also called as a prototype and then uh, this is just an claim but you also need to specify the function definition ki bhai ye claim raha ki ye naam ka function itne parameters usko lagte hai apna kaam karne ke liye and then okay after the function does its uh, job it will be sending back this type of an result is nothing but an return type so ye claim hota hai and claim is nothing but the function declaration and prototype it is just to inform compiler ki this is what we are going to use in our program so don't uh, regard that as an invalid attempt uh so if we are required to do look after the uh, function declarations very simple for example if the task is to do the function declaration for addition of the two float type of an values or two values rather so we'll say that uh, we will first decide upon the name of the function and name of the function should be closer to the purpose so agar addition karwana hai do values ka so we'll propose a name as an add and do values hai isliye do parameters hai so float and float type we obviously will go in favor of an float and jab do float type ka uh, values ka addition hota hai so result is going to be float so apna declaration aisa jayega add naam ka function the function requires two float type of an values and the function will return back float type of an value so finally we need to put semicolon because it is a part of an syntax similarly if we try to have a function whose responsibility is to round off the given a uh, real value so if i say 7.9 the function is supposed to return uh, 8 and if i say let us assume that 7.49 the function is supposed to give back 7 as an answer so i am talking about rounding off to the nearest integer so we want some function to be made responsible to look after this and then we will propose a function uska naam humne round rakha kyunki usse rounding operation expected hai to फंक्शन का नाम कभी भी क्लोजर टू द पर्पस होना चाहिए ऐसा एक अनसेट रूल है दैट इज रिकमेंडेड सो राउंड नाम का फंक्शन उसको व्हाट द फंक्शन रिक्वायर्स इज व्हाट वी शुड कम्युनिकेट टू द फंक्शन इज अ फ्लोट टाइप ऑफ एन वैल्यू अ रियल वैल्यू एंड व्हाट वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग बैक फ्रॉम द फंक्शन इज अ इंटीजर टाइप ऑफ वैल्यू सो रिटर्न टाइप इज इंटीजर सो दैट इज हाउ वी डू द फंक्शन डिक्लेरेशन नाउ जस्ट डूइंग द क्लेम इज नॉट सफिशिएंट क्लेम इज देयर शो मी द इंप्लीमेंटेशन एवरीवन विल टॉक ओके यू आर क्लेम नाउ Action of okay. show me the execution, show me the implementation. So function definition actually is an implementation, and then the syntax part is very similar to the function declaration. So the function का नाम लिखना है, you need to specify the data type of an parameter, then parameter का नाम, ये जो parameter से यहाँ लिखे जाते हैं, they are said to be an formal parameters. Really speaking, कोई they are formal parameters, and or sometimes we also can call them as as dummy parameters. this is another term which we can use and then you need to write down all basically okay the statement statement 1 2 depending upon what action we want function to take and what task is uh, uh, delegated or uh, the function is made responsible for so jaisa ye case mein agar mujhe chahiye ki function bhai tu do values ko add kar to add and function pehla value function ko milega with a as a name second value will come to the function with b as a name because the parameter names are a and b respectively and the function my job is very simple i will add a and b and i will return back this value return statement is used so return type is float so that is how the implementation goes so this is implementation and if you look back to the previous slide this is only the declaration and claim so this is in claim if we are going to use this type of function and the implementation is this you need to uh, obviously give the implementation so uh, that is how it goes and uh, my dear friends as many as uh, you are watching right now live because i know uh, some of you also believe uh, watching this videos afterwards nothing wrong in that uh, but right now uh, those who are watching uh, they are with me uh, they can always okay just put uh, something in the chat box for me to reply and if all your concerns you you can report here so for taking you ahead now if we are trying to have a function to find the minimum of two values So I'll say that min nam ka function is the function is supposed to receive two values and the responsibility is to find out the minimum among the two values. The function cannot do this blindly, so it will check and then the function will say if I find a less than b, my answer is going to be a. So I will return a. Otherwise, I will return. Same thing for factorial. Factorial is a product thing, 
so initially in a product team the value where we want the final result to get recorded should be set to one and then we simply write down in for loop because n factorial is nothing but one into two into three and uh, n so we simply propose a for loop one se lekar n tak chalega and f is equal to f into i and return that so that is how the implementation goes and now uh, really okay uh, coming to uh, the point where we should say now this is a time for we to make use of an function so now if you look at this formulation ncr uh, that is okay the number of uh, combinations uh, so binomial coefficient we are using so the formulation happens to be n factorial divided by product of r factorial and n minus r factorial so aapka analysis jo hai so you should look at this and will array our factorial function is factorial calculation is the observation observation ki agar main baat karu and you need to obviously okay spend the time doing the observation do the analysis and then settle down with the logical solution and then settle down with basically a programming solution so factorial calculation uh, is needed how many times three times so now it is a time for we to say so why we should write uh, the for loop three times it is a time for we to propose a factorial function uh, propose a factorial function fix up the responsibility ki tujhe factorial calculation ki responsibility di gayi hai एंड जब जब तुझे कॉल किया जाएगा तो तेरा काम है कि कैलकुलेट करके रिजल्ट भेजने का सो दैट इज एंजॉइंग द बेनिफिट आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग ब्रेक ऑफ अ मिनिट माई डियर फ्रेंड्स ओके प्लीज एक्सक्यूज मी प्लीज एक्सक्यूज मी okay so it is a time for we to take a benefit and that is the reason we are proposing a factorial function and once we propose a factorial function we say and we believe in that uh, philosophy ki write once and use it many times so uh please please let me know uh, shruti am i audible you you can text me ओके चलो हा सो वी वी आर प्रपोजिंग अ फैक्टोरियल फंक्शन एंड देन द मेन फंक्शन विल से इट समथिंग लाइक दिस ओके द मेन फंक्शन इज देयर एंड मेन फंक्शन नाउ इज प्रोवाइडेड विद अ बडी कॉल्ड एज अ फैक्टोरियल फंक्शन एंड मेन फंक्शन सेज आई विल कॉल यू थ्री टाइम्स माय डियर फ्रेंड एंड आई विल आस्क यू अबाउट द फैक्टोरियल कैलकुलेशन मल्टीपल टाइम्स एंड यू विल बी सेंडिंग बैक द रिजल्ट्स एंड दैट इज व्हाट इट इज हैपनिंग so this is one function call so there are three function calls so factorial function is called okay from within main three times and one for n one for r and one for n minus r so uh, we uh, the benefit is that okay the size of the program reduce reduces on a larger scale you know in a broader spectrum the size of the uh, program reduces when we start making use of an function you know i'm telling you in a very broader spectrum don't evaluate the beauty of the function only looking at such small programs so uh, i'll recommend that you should start making use of uh, the functions as and when there is an opportunity so if again the same story if uh, we are required to write a c program to list all factorials up to n so again the same thing okay, you know we need to first display the one ka factorial which is one then we need to display uh, zero ka factorial pehle so which is one One ka factorial one, two ka factorial two, and uh, three ka factorial six. So we need to obviously keep displaying all the factorials up to n. So 
then again is it not we need to for every number changing from 0 to n for every number we obviously okay need to keep calling this uh, factorial function so that's the reason we propose main kai ga yaar mera kaam hai ki i will go through all the numbers from 0 to n and for every such number visited i will keep asking you so we are proposing a factorial function whose responsibility is to find out an factorial and the main starts its journey from zero and ek ek kadam aage bad raha hai okay jump of one it simply calls uh, i ka value and then uh, 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 up to n ki baat ho rahi hai all factorials up to n uh, n ka matlab hai ki we we want uh ki the factorial value we are displaying must not exceed the value what user has entered so that's the reason we are saying first we'll find out the factorial and if we find the value of the factorial has exceeded n so we break and if it is not like that then we allow this calculated value to appear on a screen and then we go back for visiting the uh to find out the factorial of the next immediate number so you just keep on watching i believe you people have already i will not spend much time this is again how we can do the square root calculation without using sqrt or pow and the story is very simple uh, when we are trying to find out a, a a square root of any value which is greater than or equal to 1 so what we do is that we start uh, searching this is bisection method you might have come across in your uh, <clears throat> what we can say a uh, numerical uh, technique so we we keep a range because square root definitely will be from 1 to n and uh, we bisect this and then uh, it is 1 plus uh, n divided by 2 so midpoint milega hame and then we'll check ki jo square root aa raha hai basically jo ye range mein rahega ya ye range mein rahega whether in which range it falls basically and uh, then we will uh, eliminate the half portion and we start concentrating on in the remaining half and then same story will repeat again will bisect so in bisection rule the slide is available there for your reference so i will not be spending a time taking you through this because we have a lot of and lot of discussion to happen now program to prove okay uh, nico matches theorem and it's very simple it says that okay uh, for the the value what we obtain a summation of uh, the cubes of all natural numbers always will match with the square of summation of the square uh, summation of basically the square of summation of all the natural numbers so it is uh, something like this if n is equal to 3 so uh, what it says is that it is 1 cube plus 2 cube plus 3 cube always will match with 1 plus 2 plus 3 ka square and uh, okay you you can cross verify and then if it is uh, getting proved so it becomes basically okay that the theorem is holding true so this is 27 and th this becomes 8 plus 1 is 9 and this is 36 and if you look at this is 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 36 36 so that is what we are trying to prove so if we are trying to prove this then obviously left hand side kelly will propose one uh, function uh and the right hand side clearly because two summations we need to do so we'll propose separate function for the purpose the task becomes simple divide and conquer delegate the responsibility for every sub task you propose a function that is what we are talking about so left hand side ke liye hum some one uh, proposed kiya and right hand side ke liye okay and another function is made responsible so someone is simply uh, is supposed to go from 1 to n and then it, it keeps on adding basically okay it should be not n into n into n uh, actually this should be sorry this should be s is equal to s plus i into i into i so so it will for every value visited it will just okay add the cube of that and yaha uh, I, I need to write down this is s is equal to s plus i summation of all natural numbers but then when it is returning it is ret uh, returning the square of the sum what it has obtained so uh, if if uh, the when these two functions are available so main function will say uh, i will receive the value of n from user so scan f n hua and i will call some one function i will pass n and some two function is also called and i will pass n and if the values are remaining same then i will say the theorem is proved otherwise the theorem is wrong and uh, to check whether the year is leap or not. 
so i will be providing you this is a very short description about and function and will be again playing with the function because uh, we need to also uh, go through the recursive function and uh, array and as and when the need arises at least uh, we will uh, start making use of an function but by that time if you have any question you you can always uh, keep putting uh, your concerns in the chat box i will be very happy so dear friends uh, Uh, this is where i will uh, right now just just close the discussion about uh, the function and i prefer uh, i'll be taking you to uh, uh, the another form of an function which is uh, obviously okay in recursion so the functions obviously can be a recursive function or a non recursive function and now coming to the recursion uh as far as a textbook definition is concerned we can say that an okay a function is said to be recursive if it calls itself a function which calls itself is called as a recursive function and the net effect we get a function calling execution and the execution of function result in, in resulting into uh, the execution of the same function itself then that mechanism is called as obviously okay and recursion so sometimes uh, we also can say that uh, a function a function which can be expressed in its own terms is recursive function so uh, uh, it's, it's a same thought process basically okay will keep on uh, happening again and again so this is a very funny example in fact again funny statement rather i will say to understand recursion one must first understand the recursion and then again the same story again to understand the recursion one must first understand the recursion is a very nature of the recursion so when we are trying to propose a recursive function to Uh, we normally recommend that you need to settle down first okay when you are doing the mathematical analysis or a logical analysis you need to first identify something called as a recursive formula which also can be called as a general case and the second thing happens to be okay a uh, termination condition which also can be called as a, a special case so these two things are required to be so uh, uh, for example when we are trying to settle down with the summation of first n natural number so i'll say that your first n natural number is ka matlab hai first natural number is 1 second natural number is 2 and 3 and nth natural number is n so if someone ask me okay as it is there apparent but i will just write it down again one more time so for you to just okay uh, uh, have a sync with me so if someone ask us okay some थ्री कैसा एक्सप्रेस करेगा तो मैं कहूँ यार वेरी सिंपल है सम नाम का फंक्शन हमें प्रपोज करना है वी ऑलरेडी हैव डिसाइडेड दिस रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी शुड बी फिक्स्ड विथ सम फंक्शन ओके एस यू एम द नेम ऑफ द फंक्शन वी हैव डिसाइडेड ऑलरेडी एस यू एम लेट एस एज्यूम दैट वी हैव डिसाइडेड सो सम थ्री एक्चुअली विल बी राइटिंग डाउन वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री सो से ओके लेट एस ट्राई टू चेक वेदर वी कैन एक्सप्रेस द फंक्शन इन इट्स ओन टर्म्स सो फॉर दैट पर्पज वी नीड टू again one but take one more sample with one one value above or one value below so one value above we are going so we are saying how we can express sum 4 so sum 4 is nothing but pehla natural number ko add karenge second then third natural number and fourth natural number but the best part of this is that okay if you look at the first three terms of this so you immediately can write down are yaar ye sum 4 can be expressed in terms of sum 3 so i will say that this is sum 3 plus 4 and then if you look at this carefully you can settle down with a recursive formula so i'll say that sum n in general can be expressed as sum n minus 1 plus n okay and which is which is you will find that it is this place the recursive formula is available so this becomes a recursive formula now uh, we are wondering ki why we should call this as a recursive formula and the 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 a reason is very simple recursive formula ka identity if you ask me kya hai uski pehchan kya hai tab keh sakte hai recursive formula so it is a two fold response uh, uh, requirement rather two fold two fold ka matlab hai do cheez satisfy honi chahiye pehla the function which appears in the left hand side also should appear in the right hand side 
तो यहाँ आपको दिखाई जा रहा है कि लेफ्ट हैंड साइड में सम नाम का फंक्शन आ रहा है और राइट हैंड साइड उसके फॉर्मूला में, में भी सम नाम का फंक्शन आ रहा है दिस इज नंबर वन लेकिन इतना ही काफी नहीं है नंबर टू इज कि सम चेंज इन सम पैरामीटर मस्ट बी नोटिसेबल तो यहां आपने अगर देखा तो आपको दिखाई देगा कि यार यहां तो एन की बात करिए राइट हैंड साइड में देखा तो पैरामीटर आपको एन माइनस वन दिखाई देगा तो इज इट नॉट वी नोटिस द चेंज कि यहां एन है तो यहां एन माइनस वन है सम चेंज इन सम पैरामीटर मस्ट बी नोटिसेबल एंड दैट इज वॉट वी नोटिस सो वी एंडोर्स एंड वी एंड वी अप्रूव दिस एज अ रिकर्सिव फॉर्मूला एंड वंस वी हैव एन रिकर्सिव फॉर्मूला देन द सेकेंड थिंग इज टू फाइंड आउट द टर्मिनेशन कंडीशन एंड टर्मिनेशन कंडीशन का सिंपल मीनिंग इज कि हाउ लॉन्ग एंड वॉट विल बी द सिचुएशन and for which value of n uh, we will not be able to make use of this uh, formula is nothing but the termination condition so my dear friend okay you need to just okay do and try and uh, okay error kind of an approach you need to employ ke chalo isme n ke jagah ek ek value substitute karke chalte hain aur dekhte hain to dheere dheere jab aap aaoge zero pe ki jab n zero ho jayega तो इसका मतलब है कि समवन इज आस्किंग मी सी इफ इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट इफ समवन आस्क मी द मीनिंग ऑफ सम थ्री कैल से दैट दिस मींस एक्चुअली दिस मींस दिस मींस दैट इज इज एन अटेम्प्ट टू फाइंड सम ऑफ फर्स्ट थ्री natural numbers similarly if someone asks a sum zero so i'll say that you need to find a sum but you don't have to add anything so you need to find out a sum and you don't have to add anything so if you don't add anything the result obviously okay is going to be zero so that is what i'm saying if n is zero you cannot use make you you cannot make use of this formulation because an attempt to use this formula becomes invalid so it is sum zero and sum minus 1 and plus 0 and minus 1 ka koi matlab nahi nikalta hai so don't use it zabardasti thodi na don't use it if it is going invalid don't use it but then if you are not using you, you you need to know the answer and what is the answer zero and this becomes a theme basically of the summation function a recursive theme and we say sum function you will be receiving a number n and you are supposed to find out the summation of first n natural number so if you find n ka value as 0 so please don't use the formula you just immediately return back your answer as 0 lekin agar n ka value 0 nahi hai so you turn the result by using the formula and what is the formula please check the right hand side what is the formula it is sum n minus 1 plus n and that is how the implementation of an recursive function goes and same thing for an factorial also factorial is the same story but instead of addition we are talking about an multiplication so it is uh, factorial zero is one so the function is supposed to send back one and this become facts n my minus 1 multiplied by n because it is a product theme which is playing a role so this is how we need to keep proposing the recursive function and then uh, if if uh, we are planning to propose a recursive function one more sample i will take if you are trying to propose a recursive function say mm, so x is real and n is non negative integer so then it's very simple story because mathematically also we know that x raised to n is nothing but x raised to n minus 1 multiplied by x so the same story i can express in terms of uh, a function so if if we are proposing a function our own function so i will uh, try to not use the name of an inbuilt function pow function also serves the same purpose uh, so i will use some different nomenclature here so i am saying that let us call this function as uh, pwr so pwr ka naam ka function hum log propose kar rahe and then we want okay two 
Now parameters the function should receive and this can be expressed as p w r and x comma n minus one and this is uh, multiplied by x. So this becomes a recursive formula. And again, if someone asks us to justify okay, how you'll be calling this as a recursive formula, so I will make use of the same uh, uh, justification and I will play the same tune. I can call it as okay, uh, the function which appears in the left hand side also appears in the right hand side. And some change in some parameter must be noticeable, and that is also holding true. So, here n, so here n minus 1. Hai. So, this is a recursive formula. And if someone asks me, okay, for which value of n we cannot use this formula, so I'll say that when n becomes 0, so uh, then the formula appears to be going something like, okay, x raised pwr x comma n and uh, pwr x minus 1 multiplied by x. So, which is uh, not allowed. The reason is that, okay, your n cannot be negative because we have non-negative proposed karni ki koshish ki hai. So, agar n ke value ke liye galat ja hai, don't use it. If it is invalid, don't use it. And if you are not using it, then remember the result. So, you, now you tell me, okay, what can be the result of any value raised to zero? So, the result of any real value raised to zero, obviously, is going to be one. Anything raised to zero is uh, one. So that is how we propose a function now. Okay, this is a game plan. This is basically after we spend a time on doing the mathematical analysis, we can settle down with uh, the logical solution. And then once we settle down with the logical solution, we can propose basically, okay, the programming solution also. So we can say, well and good, uh, PWR naam ka function hai. First parameter X is going to be real type, means float. And second parameter is going to be non-negative. You can be very specific. You can write down unsigned. So instead of int, you can use this modifier and unsigned int. And the result of this obviously is going to be float. And it's a very simple story. The function says, agar mujhe jo value mila n ka, if I find the value is matching with zero, so I am not supposed to do any calculation. I'm not supposed to use the formula, but my result is going to be one. Else. Uh, to find out the result, I need to make use of a formula. So I will return uh, by making use of the formula. And what is the formula? The formula is right hand side. So I'll say PWR, this is x comma n minus 1 multiplied by x, as simple as that. So this becomes your recursive function. So similarly, there is something called as an hailstone sequence. So, and it goes like this, if n is divisible, if n is even divided by 2, to n is equal to n slash 2. If n is odd, then you need to, okay, calculate a new value of n by using this formulation, n is equal to 3n plus 1. So, uh, if n is equal to 5, then the sequence would be, now I'll just check, okay, we begin with a 5. So, 5 appears on a screen. Then 5 being an odd number, so... Uh, obviously, we'll divide it. Uh, uh, we will multiply it by three and we'll add one because odd number. Ke liye, this is a treatment for odd number and this is a treat for uh, uh, even number. So this is what we want uh, a treatment to be given for even number. So it becomes three into five plus one sixteen. So sixteen again. Now sixteen is basically okay. Uh, what we say uh, even number. So we divide it by two. So it becomes eight. Eight is even number. So divide two. And 2 is even number, so we divide it by uh, 2, so it becomes 1. 1 is an odd number, so 1 into 3 plus 1 becomes 4. And so on. this is non-ending kind of n series. And uh, what we need to do is we, we will uh, just uh, uh, decide upon how many terms we want uh, to, to display. So we are uh, required to ask user, rather main function says you give me a starting term and you tell me how many terms display to the count. And then it simply calls this hell and n comma c. And what happens is if c is zero, so when the count reduces to zero, obviously, okay, it returns. That's all. That is the end of the story. Otherwise, it prints the given n ka value and checks if it is even, then it calls the same function. Uh, it, they should not be f, really speaking. They should be hell because the name of the function is hell. So please uh, take it as hell. Okay. So it calls hell function. And uh, it uh, passes n ka value by dividing it by 2. And it reduces the count by 1. Because, okay, 8 term display, ho chuka, so c minus 1. And here, hell, 3 into n minus 1. 
So this is how basically you can lot. There are a lot of problems, my dear friends, which can be more, uh, which can be solved by using a recursive approach in a more better manner. And the life appears to be going simple if we try to handle and adopt the recursive approach instead of non-recursive approach. And there are ample number of op opportunities and situations rather where you may realize that it is better to stick to the non-recursive approach. So your experience uh, uh, dealing with the problem, solving the problem, uh, getting more exposure definitely will uh, bring a wisdom of you to decide, okay, which approach is more better uh, recursive or non-recursive from the user perspective. If you ask me computational uh, cost involved, so recursive is a, a costlier affair, computationally costlier as compared to non-recursive because it, it requires uh, what we say, the usage of a data structure called as a stack because we know whenever a function is called okay, internally, a uh, data structure called as a stack, which is a LIFO, last in, first out kind of an organization is used. So uh, it, it all depends upon. So now, uh, if if I ask you about uh, about about the uh, output of this, if if I say uh, what can be the output of uh, this function, it, it's it's there. In fact, okay, if I to spend the time. So uh, this is a function. Uh, this is again basically a kind of a paragraph uh, you can go through and uh, which probably is uh, in sync with and in line with what right now i'm trying to explain you a child couldn't sleep so her mother told her a story about a little frog who couldn't sleep so mother the frog's mother told her a story about a little bear and who fell asleep and the little frog uh, fell asleep and the child fell asleep so uh, the first two fell asleep is the last one to hear a story which is little bear and then comes the turn of frog and then comes the turn of a child so that is how it is last in and first out so if you look at this mechanism so there is a function and we are wondering if the function is called and if we call a function with f13 what uh, would what uh, would be the result of this so how it goes so first the main function will call the function f6 so n equal to 13 so n ka value jab 13 hai so if condition 13 greater than 1 is true so it results into a call given to the same function f6 uh, by dividing 13 by 2 so 13 by 2 is 6 integer by integer is integer so it calls the function and then it will result into the execution of another function the same function but another incarnation and avatar and uh, copy of the same function function f but the value of n it has received is uh, obviously n is equal to 6 here and the very first incarnation and avatar has received uh, n ka value as 13 but then you need to understand that since the function call is happening prior to printf so your printf is pending so prior to printf uh, plays a role or rather allowed to play a role the function dusre copy uh, the second copy of the function ka execution shuru ho jata hai and same story will keep on happening so finally when the final call is made and when the value of okay n is reduced to one so if you look at okay when the function now this is the most recent avatar i can say uh, this is the most recent okay so it's function f which has received n ka value as one so this is the recent copy or avatar of the function which is playing a role and when it receives n ka value as one so one greater than one is false and that's the reason the entry inside if is not given and that is the reason this printf is now allowed to play a role so subse pehla printf will happen belonging to the most recent avatar and most recent copy so it plays a role one more two becomes one so one appears on a screen then okay it says i have done my job and now uh, i want my previous avatar to okay just just do the pending work so then the control is given back and then printf3 modulus 2 will appear on a screen 3 modulus 2 is 1 and then the control is given back and the pending uh, job will be done 6 modulus 2 is 0 and then it is given back and finally okay 13 modulus 2 is again 1 and then the very first avatar it has been called by main function so it will hand over the control back to main and that is end of the story so what appears on the screen in a form of an output is uh, 11 
and 11 not 11 in fact 1101 and actually this is a binary equivalent of 13. So this uh, is a very simple function which is used to display the binary equivalent of a given number. So uh, the story appears to be okay in line with uh, uh, in, in going in line with this. So the, the one who performs the job right at the beginning is the last one to come in. That is what I'm telling you. So the one who if, uh, okay who has uh, fell Asleep is a bear, little bear, then little frog, and then little child. That is how basically okay, uh, it, it goes. So uh, same story, we can modify the same function to handle, uh, to make the function to display basically, okay, the hexadecimal number. Uh, and and so prior to this, uh, I, I prefer, after having a discussion on recursive function, and uh, uh, let us also uh, talk about the concept of uh, storage classes. And when it comes to a storage class, so uh, generally, okay, the purpose of a storage class, uh, storage class always specifies. So it specifies. the following details about the variable depending upon okay to which storage class it uh, belongs to so <clears throat> it, it talks about the storage place It talks about the default value. It talks about the scope of a variable. And it talks about the longevity. So storage place ka matlab generally two options. Okay, the value of the variable either will get recorded in a main memory. Or it will get recorded in CPU registers. Uh, you all have done the microprocessor, so you know what are registers. Default value, there are two possibilities. The default value can be zero, that is null, or it can be garbage, unpredictable. The scope can be local, the function the variable can be accessed only inside the block or a function in which it has been declared or a scope can be global longevity only during execution of its function or a block yato during entire execution so these are in fact okay uh, in a very uh, shortest and uh, sweetest manner i'm just trying to okay just uh, make you recall all the discussion you might have come across in your earlier semesters so i want you to just okay these are the four things every storage class will talk about and then when it comes to uh, storage classes so we know okay the storage class can be automatic which the keyword happens to be auto the storage class can be register so uh, the storage class can be static all in small case and the storage class can be an external so uh, as far as automatic is concerned the, the value of the automatic variable gets recorded in a main memory the default value for an automatic variable happens to be garbage or unpredictable the scope of an automatic variable happens to be local because all local variables are regarded as belonging to an automatic storage class by default. And this is only during its function or a block 
execution. So when it comes to a register, everything remains same. What only changes because the name itself is register. So the values generally are preferred to to be getting recorded in the CPU register because CPU registers are in a limited number. So if they are already occupied, then obviously even if you specify register as a storage class, it may happen that okay the value will get recorded in a main memory. So we cannot give a guarantee that it will always get recorded because there are limited number of CPU registers, irrespective of the type of processor you are talking about. But if you look at the main memory uh, bandwidth or the capacity, what right now you your generation is talking about. So it is you say okay, even in your smartphone and cell phone, not less than I believe eight GB. You people are ready to compromise upon. So eight GB and twelve GB and sixteen GB. So it's a very very ample and ample of uh, uh, memory made available in abundance. So uh, uh, this abundance itself is a very relative term. As in more more number of applications will keep on arriving and they keep on consuming more resources, you will run after more memory, and that is how okay, it goes moves along. Baki, rahi baat, uh, baki features ki to it's a garbage, local, and static ki agar mein baat karu to again the value gets recorded in a main memory, and uh, the value is zero or null. Scope is local, but uh, the existence of a static variable is during entire execution. This is main memory. This is zero. The scope is global because external ka matlab hai bahar sare function ke bahar baitha hai. So obviously by default it is applicable to a global variable and during entire execution. So in a nutshell, this is how basically okay the storage classes goes. And uh, for we to better understand, uh, if I try to uh, uh, compare the static and automatic, so. If I if I take a simple example, something like this, we have a function f, and uh, if if I write down uh, uh, int, and uh, value of x is set to five, and uh, if I say printf, and uh, uh, x is equal to percentage d, and x ka value, and uh, then I will reduce x ka value by one, and I will close down. And let us assume that from main main function, the function f is called uh, three times. So f, f, and f. Now what will happen if you look at this declaration? So this obviously the variable is declared inside a function. So therefore, it is regarded as local variable. And when it is regarded as local variable, the storage class is by default storage class for local variables is automatic. So this declaration is as good as writing down. This is same as as if we are writing down. Auto int x equal to five, but you don't have to write down this keyword auto. And the practice of writing down this keyword auto, in fact, has gone obsolete, no longer in a practice. But all local variables by default are regarded as belonging to a automatic category. Now, what happens if you look at the scope? Scope is local. If you look at the longevity, only during the execution of the function. Automatic ki agar main baat karu aur ye dekho uski longevity kya hai? Ya dekho automatic. Only the, the variable will be alive only during uh, the execution of its function. That's all. So what happens when three times the function is called? First time the function is called, the function starts its execution. The, the x variable comes into the existence. The value gets set to five. And uh, output ki agar mein baat karu. So this uh, x equal to five will appear on a screen. Then the value of x is decremented, so it becomes four. And when it becomes four, then the execution of the function gets over. And when the execution of the function gets over, this x loses its existence 
because uski longevity is only and only during the execution of its own function so it it is evaporated it is no longer into the existence it goes it's it's gone so it's not in the existence now what happens is second time the same function is called vapas call kiya yahan dekho second time the function is getting called vapas function f ka execution shuru vapas this x will come into the existence vapas uska value will be set to 5 vapas x equal to 5 will appear on the screen then the value of x will get reduced to 4 and the execution of the function f gets over and moment it gets over this variable x will lose upon its existence no longer it will be into the existence it evaporates it goes off it's gone and this will keep on happening okay three times because three times the function has been called so it is x equal to 5 x equal to 5 and x equal to 5 however now if we change apply one change and uh, i say let us do this one more time so void f has include to hai hai and then what i do is that i'll say static and int and x equal to 5 so what change if i ask you what change you notice okay as compared to the previous uh, uh, function we have as compared to this you say that sir ye ye nayi nayi cheez aa gayi this is new thing uh, now the storage class for x is static and no longer it is integer okay and then rest will remain same so if if i say that uh, <clears throat> so uh, rest will remain same so print up and backslash n and x equal to percentage b and uh, x ka value and then minus minus x ki baat ho rahi and and then main function and same story the main function is calling this function f three times so first call second call and third call now the difference will be aur iske output ki baat karenge hum log ke kya aayega output now the difference is if you look at the features and the characteristics of uh, the static my dear friends okay just just okay focus on focus on uh, this row yaha so if you look at the initial value of this is set to zero by default agar nahi value assign kiye uska scope bhale local hai lekin uska existence longevity is during the entire execution iska matlab ek bar wo aa gaya na ek bar once it is created it doesn't loses its execution throughout the execution of the entire program and not only the function so what happens in this case when the main function uh, uh, calls the function f this static x comes into the existence the value initially is set to 5 the printf will display x equal to 5 the value gets reduced to 4 and the execution of the function gets over but when the function gets over the x doesn't loses its existence it is still alive because it is supposed to remain alive throughout the execution of the program second time when the function is called and one more thing the static variables are initialized only once and that too during the first function call so wapas x equal to 5 nahi hoga okay always the most recent value will be considered so the most recent value is 4 so it displays x equal to 4 and then the value will get reduced to 3 and the third function call will display x equal to 3 so that is a difference in between as far as the effect is concerned the effect of using automatic storage class and the static storage class so uh, this is something about the storage class and i want you to just okay look at uh, some simple static related uh, examples will go through and we will i think better understand uh, this so th these are there are some examples which we already have discussed last time now uh, if you look at this so if you look at this uh, a program very simple this is recursive because main is calling itself so it is a recursion now what happens is that uh, if you look at the storage class of i it is static so ek bar ye i aa gaya na existence mein to aisa hi rahega to initial value is set to 
एंड मेन के अंदर माइनस माइनस आई इसका मतलब okay, पहले वैल्यू ऑफ आई विल बी रिड्यूस एंड देन द एंट्री इज परमिटेड सो वॉट हैपन्स इज इट्स समथिंग लाइक दिस द फर्स्ट कॉल पहले मेन का एग्जीक्यूशन एंट्री पॉइंट ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूशन इज ऑलवेज मेन एंड इंटरनली द सिस्टम ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम एंश्योर दैट इज गेटिंग कॉल्ड तो मेन फंक्शन का एग्जीक्यूशन शुरू आय का वैल्यू फाइव है तो दिस क्रिएटेड ओनली वंस एंड इट रिमेन्स नाउ आय का वैल्यू फाइव चल रहा है अभी तो इफ में माइनस माइनस है प्री ऑपरेटर यूज किया तो यहाँ फोर हो जाएगा and then this will result into call given to main again so if you look at the main function is called one more execution of the main function but the only difference is now the value of i is no longer 5 it is changed to 4 so i is equal to 4 right? okay and then yaha printf pending hai this is pending okay and is trying to print the value of i so this printf is still pending okay you need to understand and there is a single copy created for obviously okay in static variable so uh, no separate copy for every function and same story will keep on happening now this execution the second execution of main again i ka value 4 hai so if condition becomes 3 because minus minus hai and this will result into a main function getting called aur uska bhi printf baki hai pending hai percentage d and i ka value is pending so aisa hote rahega aur kab tak chalta rahega so when till what this will happen when the value when finally dot 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 when the main function is called for i equal to 1 so please look at this i equal to 1 jab hai na to if condition minus minus i pre hai to ye zero ho jayegi and zero ka matlab c language mein we know that okay it is regarded as false so when main function is called for i ka value jab 1 hai to then obviously uh, ye execution nahi hoga lekin value of i has been finally reduced hote hote 3 and then 2 and uh one and then finally zero ho chuka hai to abhi ka recent value of i is zero but then for zero uh, if condition is false so entry is not permitted so this function the latest copy of incarnation of main gets over and it will start sending back the control to its previous avatar and the previous avatar then will complete the printing job which is printf and it will start displaying the value of i but the most important point is it is a single copy of i and the every function will not have its own copy because static variable hai so isliye latest value jo i ka hai which is zero so zero will be displayed so uh, will will be displayed obviously how many times four times why four times because it will get displayed for i equal to 5 i equal to 4 i equal to 3 and i equal to 2 and i equal to 1 uh, ke liye jab call kiya gaya tha tab display nahi kiya so four times basically uh this uh, zero will appear uh, that is how it goes so if you have any question you can uh, just just put that in a chat box otherwise uh, we can go ahead and i'll just waiting for okay you people there are very few it seems but then which are live uh, uh, but uh, you have any uh, question i'll be happy person okay to uh, try my best to address it so if you look at this example the same story slightly different slightly different so what is happening here the main is calling itself so it is recursive so again a static variable so only one single copy of a static variable will come into the existence its name var hai initial value is 5 so first printf will display and then post decrement hai post so first output ki baat agar hum log karenge to okay it will display the variable ka value 5 and then it becomes 4 and 
ई फोर का मतलब है एनी नॉन जीरो वैल्यू इज रिगार्डेड एज टू तो अगेन इट विल फॉल द मेन फंक्शन द मेन फंक्शन विल डिस्प्ले फोर देन एंड अगेन इट विल कॉल एंड दिस विल कीप ऑन हैपनिंग सो फॉर विच वैल्यू ऑफ वेरिएबल डेफिनेटली ओके the if condition will go false so when the value of variable becomes zero so prior to that pehle 5 display hoga fir 4 display hoga fir 3 display hoga 2 display hoga one display hone ke baad mein the variable value further will get reduced and become zero so then if condition goes false and then this recursion process stops and the function will not be allowed to call itself so it is coming out of the recursion but by that time it has displayed 5 4 3 2 1 So that will be the output of uh, this. So that is how okay I I can put uh, in front of you the effect what we achieve by using a static. so this uh, questions uh, objective type questions i believe already it has been shared with you people by the placement department so you you try to solve them and if you have any difficulty uh, i am al always there or we rather we are there okay to help you out whether together we can work and then sort out all these difficult problems or difficulties that are so for taking you ahead this is something about an recurrence recursive function so you will try and i'll be uh, putting all this uh, okay uh, the the pop quizzes uh, i'll provide you with the link and placement cell will provide you with this link and you will be trying your best to attempt them and uh, if something goes wrong we we are not uh, much concerned because to ir is a human so for uh, dear friend this is uh, something regarded with uh, the recursive function so for taking you ahead and uh, let us have a discussion on again one of the uh, important feature especially uh, the significance of this feature uh, becomes very relevant when we are trying to deal with large number of values a volume uh, that two of the same type so that is where we we come to uh, the concept of an array so array basically okay is a uh, typically speaking a homogeneous uh, collection because uh, it it basically okay represents a collection of similar type of elements variables and then uh, not spending too much of a time on how we declare an array and this and that so this is how we do the array declaration single 1d array so you need to specify the data type name of an array and the Uh, capacity what you want an array to have so if you are saying 40 so it means that this array a yeah collection a is capable of holding it can accommodate 40 integer type of values and we know that it is subscripted variable so every value basically okay uh, in in array available in this uh, collection is indexed so the indexing begins with zero in which as it happens with almost all programming languages there are some exceptions but array indexing always begins with uh, 0 so 0 1 2 and n minus 1 and uh, the value sitting there is a of 0 so uh, if 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 uh, in array notation if we write it something like this and if someone ask me what is this i so i always stands for an index it is a position square bracket mein jo likha jata hai it is position and if someone ask us what is a just a so i'll say that a is the name of array or more specifically yeah, more specifically it's starting base address name of the array is always base address starting address and if someone ask us okay what is this entire thing tell me now you you are saying name of the array is the starting address you are saying square root bracket ke andar jo likha jata hai that is uh, the index or position indicator hai so if someone ask us okay abhi ye bata ki ye pura kya hai this entire thing so i say that this entire thing is a value
available in collection array a at index position same as i so i is a position a is a starting and a of i is the value sitting there okay uh, at at index position i so that is a and we know okay when it comes to uh, array uh, the best loop available for an array is a for loop and uh, the way we normally prefer to uh, process the elements of an array is a kind of a journey plan so you can say that okay you you believe in a forward journey or sometimes a backward journey so journey plan i will plan to visit each and every position and then okay play with the value sitting there it is a for for and going up to n minus 1 and backward journey plan can be obviously okay starting with n minus 1 and dropping down to uh, 0 and we also can sometimes have a journey plan in which we will start with two extremes simultaneously so initially i is set to 0 and j is set to another extreme that is in position n minus 1 and then i is met to step forward and j step backward and then they are approaching towards each other so as long as i is less than j we want the for loop to uh, play a role so you also can initialize the array at the time of its declaration and if you are doing that the size as it is given here you don't have to write down size the reason is ki uh, the number of values what we specify indirectly will be deciding upon the size so how many are there uh, number of days in a, each and every month agar collection uh, ki baat ho rahi hai so there are 12 so the size will be regarded as 12 okay and these are some of the uh, programs which uh, uh, you might have come across okay in in your undergraduate uh, previous semesters rather so this is called as an typically an cyclic left shift so if the original sequence happens to be like this a ka value originally a0 is 2 so the list is uh, something like this originally so we have 2 and 7 and 56 and 91 and 12 so cyclic left shift ka matlab hai left mein shift karna aisa cyclic hai so every value element sitting here in an array will get shifted to the left by one one position so this becomes 7 and this becomes 56 91 12 and the leftmost now will uh, will get shifted in a cyclic manner and now will appear and emerge from the rightmost so this becomes 2 so for we to uh, achieve this and do this uh, the simple storage is 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 to swap ki pehla jo hai aur isko aur iske beech mein swapping karte hain fir baad mein second aur third ke baad mein swapping karenge because finally what we want the leftmost gradually should be shifted to the rightmost position and remaining are required to get shifted to the left by one one position so that is what we are doing and then iska matlab hai ki we need to do the swapping sabse pehla swapping a of 0 and a of 1 mein hoga uske baad mein swapping a of 1 and a of 2 mein hoga aur aisa chalta rahega so final swapping will be happening in between last but one value and last value so last but one value ka index n minus 2 hota hai aur last value ka index n minus 1 hota hai तो इसमें भी हम लोग स्वैपिंग करेंगे एंड द जॉब इज डन नाउ इसका ऑब्जर्वेशन क्या है कि ये सारे जो स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट में हमने लिखा है एरे प्रोसेसिंग माय डियर फ्रेंड एरे प्रोसेसिंग इज नथिंग बट लुकिंग एट द इंडेक्स प्लेइंग विद द पोजीशन एंड प्लानिंग आउट एंड जर्नी सो लुक एट द इंडेक्स पोजिशन स्क्वेयर ब्रैकेट में जो भी आपको दिखाई दे रहा है उसके बारे में सोचो तो यहाँ अगर हम लोग देख रहे हैं स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट में तो आपको दिखाई देगा यार ये जीरो है बाद में वन है बाद में टू है एंड सो ऑन है तो लेटेस्ट बिकॉज इट इज चेंजिंग विल से लेटेस्ट रिप्रेजेंट दिस वेरिएबल आई नाउ इफ यू ट्राई टू जस्ट एस्टेब्लिश अ कनेक्शन इन बिटवीन लेफ्ट हैंड साइड एंड राइट हैंड साइड विल से यहाँ जीरो है तो यहाँ वन है यहाँ वन है तो यहाँ टू है 
तो यहां अगर i है तो यहां i प्लस वन है सो वी कैन से दैट ओके लेफ्ट हैंड साइड विल यूज i एंड राइट हैंड साइड के लिए विल यूज i प्लस वन एंड वंस वी हैव डन विद दिस ऑब्जर्वेशन तो हम लोग जनरलाइज फॉर्मूला प्रपोज करेंगे कि एवरी a ऑफ i नीड्स टू बी स्वैप विद a ऑफ i प्लस वन एंड दिस शुड हैपन फॉर ऑल द वैल्यूज ऑल द पोजिशन फ्रॉम जीरो टू एन माइनस टू लुक एट दिस प्लीज लुक एट द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पहला पोजीशन जीरो है दूसरा पोजीशन वन है इंडेक्स पोजीशन और लास्ट पोजीशन एन माइनस टू विल डू दिस फॉर जीरो टू एन माइनस टू एंड वंस वी सेटल डाउन विद दिस देन इट कम्स अ मैटर ऑफ राइटिंग डाउन दिस इन अ प्रोग्रामिंग फॉर्म एंड दैट इज व्हाट वी डिड हियर यू विल फाइंड दैट ओके फॉर आई चेंजिंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू एन माइनस टू एंड यहाँ वी आर स्वैपिंग A of i with a of i plus one, and after we do with the swapping, we'll be settling down with. We'll display the values, so it becomes a left shift. So as I right shift that sector, then you have been sorting and searching, and you have done lot many operations on array. My attempt is basically okay, just make you to again recollect those uh, memories and then realize that array. So sab am kar chuke and it is easy. and it is a cup of uh, okay sir your you, your own so you can easily handle it so please please okay just just try to uh, uh, go back and bring back that potential of uh, playing with c programming language so then comes in concept of an strings a string is represented by a uh, one dimensional array of character or it also can be uh, declared by using a pointer to character type a string constant is any sequence of characters included within a pair of double quotes so this is one example of a string constant and declaration agar baat karenge so the declaration syntax is like this so you need to write on character type of an array or pointer to the character type so how string gets recorded if we initialize a string to a b c and 1 and 2 so pehla character at the position 0 b becomes position 1 c becomes position 2 and as there is a gap which is i think visibly also you can make out ki there is a gap in between c and 1 if not you please assume that it is a gap so that is the reason at index position 3 you have only one single blank if this symbol stands for a blank so i will i will show it here so this to indicate that very precisely there is only one single gap lying in between index position 2 and index position 4 so as a record that by default by default every string is terminated by a null character which is backslash 0 so backslash zero in fact is nothing but is to say that yah string khatam ho chuka and uh, length of the string happens to be ki jitne bhi character string mein present hai including blank but excluding null its uh, uh, length of the string so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so 6 becomes length of the string how to uh, input and output the string so we have uh, some functions made available for the purpose only two right now i'm talking about so when you are planning to make use of uh, scanf you need to write down percentage s as a conversion character and the word of caution is that your str the name of the string must not be preceded by a keyword ampersand बिकॉज एम्परसेंट इज एन एड्रेस ऑपरेटर और अभी अभी मैंने बताया था कि एरे का नाम जो होता है वो खुद एड्रेस होता है दिस इज नथिंग बट एन एरे ओनली सो नेम ऑफ एन एरे इज ऑलवेज द स्टार्टिंग एड्रेस सो यू डोंट हैव टू पुट एंड टू से दैट आई एम सेंडिंग यू एड्रेस नो देन अनदर फंक्शन इज गेट्स विच इज मेड अवेलेबल फॉर द पर्पज सिमिलरली यू कैन प्रिंट द स्टिंग विदाउट एनी हेजिटेशन एंड यू ऑल्सो कैन प्रिंट ओनली अ स्टिंग बाई यूजिंग फूड्स बिकॉज फूड्स इज ओनली एंड ओनली टू डिस्प्ले द स्टिंग Uh, and printf is more versatile it can display not only string but uh, non string uh, data type also like float and double and integer and char so these are some of uh, the functions in fact 
which uh, which which are available you might be knowing about this so write a program to find the length of the string without using uh, str alien function which is an inbuilt function and which is used obviously okay to uh, find out the length of the string and then there are lot many functions okay i'll take you to some example so question number 7 you may be aware of this but then there are lot many functions okay there are lot many i'm telling you but the most commonly frequently used uh, is string length which returns the length of the string then we have str cpy so you need to specify two strings so first string is a receiver so the string what you specify in the second in in the form of a second parameter will get copied into the first parameter so this is str cpy then you have concatenation str cat which is used to join the two strings s1 and s2 so the net result what we get is s1 will receive s1 plus s2 and this plus is nothing but a join operation right? it's not an addition Now this is join operation, and then we have str chr, uh, which is uh, which which returns uh, a, a pointer to the very first occurrence of the character what we have specified, and then we have str str. So if I write down okay str str, and if I write down s and s1, so this is in fact okay to find out the occurrence of substring from a given string. so to find the first occurrence of a given string into another string the answer obviously is str so there are such many functions available that that is what i'm trying to tell you and then we can also propose our own function to find out the length of the string or to check whether the string is palindrome or not so these are some of the examples if we are trying to find out the uh, to, to to check whether the to reverse the string so reversing uh, the string is nothing but pehla character should be swapped with the last character second character should be swapped with the second last character and so on and so forth so what we do is that we first find out the length of the string and length of the string is always basically okay the position where backslash 0 is sitting that is end of the story end of the string backslash 0 is string yahan khatam ho gaya aisa kehte so it is always available at that uh, value of the string length so yahan string length 6 agar hai so index position 6 pe aapko backslash 0 milega so सही माने लास्ट वैलिड पोजीशन कैरेक्टर का पोजीशन होता है लेंथ माइनस वन सो दैट इज व्हाट वी आर डूइंग वी आर फर्स्ट फाइंडिंग आउट स्ट्रिंग लेंथ एंड वी आर सेइंग वी वांट टू स्टार्ट अ जर्नी फ्रॉम आई इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी वांट आई टू कम एंड स्टैंड एट द वेरी फर्स्ट लोकेशन ऑफ द स्ट्रिंग आई इक्वल टू जीरो एंड देन वी वॉन्ट जे टू गो एंड स्टैंड एट द जे एथ लोकेशन ऑफ दैट इज द लास्ट इंडेक्स पोजिशन of of this string so j is start standing at 5 here and then we keep swapping so every time we swap i is incremented by 1 and j is decremented by 1 so that is how it goes and for every such combination of i and j we keep swapping so t ko milega str of i str of i ko milega str of j and str of j will receive t and once we have done with this so it is a reverse string so similarly we can use this for checking whether the string is palindrome or not
coming to a 2d array so two dimensional array ka declaration syntax is like this only for our convenience we try to visualize it in in form of uh, a tabular representation but the fact remain in memory all the elements appears one after another okay in the consecutive memory locations so uh, we can simply do the array declaration or we can uh, also uh, declare an array and initialize it simultaneously so when you are doing this uh, you may not write down the row size first index can be left empty that is valid so uh, if we provide the values the values are getting filled row wise so 11 12 40 or 55 will come and will sit in the first row then 66 77 88 99 will come and will occupy the second row and uh, 222 will come and will occupy the final row ka first value and baki values humne diye nahi hai kyunki all together we want 12 values but only uh, nine values uh, are are provided so rest of the values will be set to zero the other way of doing this is also using the internal curly braces which uh, every pair of internal curly brace stands for a particular row iska matlab ye hai ki pair ke opening करली ब्रेस और क्लोजिंग करली ब्रेस का ये तुम्हारा रो नंबर वन हो गया दिस बिकम्स योर रो नंबर टू एंड दिस बिकम्स योर रो नंबर टू हाउ वी कैन अरेंज सो फॉर लूप ही यूज होता है और टू डी एरे की बात चलती है तो जर्नी प्लान अभी टू फोल्ड है कि आपको रो वाइज जर्नी करनी है कॉलम वाइज नेस्टेड फॉर लुक यूज किया जाता है तो रो वाइज अगर जर्नी करनी है तो रो इंडेक्स विल बी द फर्स्ट फॉर लुक एंड इनर फॉर लुक विल बी द कॉलम इंडेक्स एंड कॉलम वाइज अगर जर्नी करनी है तो कॉलम इंडेक्स पहले आएगा और बाद में रो इंडेक्स आएगा and this is one example which is there in front of you to find the summation of uh, the the addition of two matrices please go through this i will wait momentarily for a minute uh, so that you will get a time for going through and okay and if you have any questions we will be asking so give me a break of okay just one minute i'll be back
okay so resuming back uh, i assume that you are done with this now before we uh, conclude the today's session i also have decided uh, to spend a time on pointer and the reason for this is very simple so that the next session uh, i'll be in a position to talk about uh, the dynamic memory allocation and uh, how we can make use of uh, 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 these features to make an optimal usage of the memory and to ensure that the memory is uh, the wastage of memory is not happening okay so coming to uh, again one of the most happening and powerful feature of uh, c programming language and that is a pointer <clears throat> so definition wise uh, for every variable declared in a program uh, this is just an preamble i, I prefer okay to to always uh, comment uh, upon and uh, talk about so every time we declare a variable in a program some a chunk of a main memory is allocated to it it all depends upon how many bytes and what what is the size of the data type so if you are talking about an float type of an variable so the float type of an variable will demand a chunk of four bytes uh, four consecutive <clears throat> uh, uh what we can say uh, memory locations will be consumed by one float type of an variable <clears throat> uh then integer ki baat kar diye to integer obviously we, we we need to just check uh whether uh, the the platform is consuming two bytes or it is consuming basically okay the uh, four bytes so depending upon that it consumes the memory so moral of the story is for every variable we are declaring in a program a chunk of a main memory is getting allocated a memory can be regarded now how to visualize a memory in a logical manner not a very technical manner but logical organization so uh, abstract view of a memory is nothing but uh, you assume that all the memory locations are falling one after another in a consecutive se sequence okay so a memory can be regarded as a sequence of memory location each capable of holding one byte of data each identified by a unique address so it's a, a collection of mem memory location each memory location is capable of holding one byte and every memory location <clears throat> is identified by a unique address so now in this diagram diagrammatic representation these are the memory locations these are the addresses and let us in that if we have this kind of a declaration so which is there i just i'm writing down one more time if we have a variable x declared as integer type value set to 20 <clears throat> and we have uh, another variable y which is float type and the value set to 3.5 so somewhere in a memory most of the time they they are consecutive memory location but somewhere in the memory a chunk of four bytes so this is a chunk of four bytes number 1 2 3 and 4 so chunk of four bytes will be consumed by why because y is a float type of an variable and a chunk of two bytes will be consumed by x because x is integer and we are assuming that integer on the platform right now we are talking about consumes two bytes so now if someone ask us what is an address of y so address always will be the address of the very first memory location belonging to that variable so as we have said that okay y is occupying the memory from this point to this point and the address of the very first memory location pertaining and belonging to y is 1050 we'll say that the address of y is 1050 and the address of x is 1054 and this uh, especially when it comes to an pointer so these are the two operators which are used and is an address operator and asterisk is a value yaha likha hai is a value at address so asterisk is value and address operator and ampersand is address operator so jaisa ye case mein and x likha so it is 105 what is an address of x 
so it is 1054 and if we write down asterisk and of x so iska matlab hai what is the value which is sitting at the address of x so obviously it is a value belonging to x which is 20 so if you look at this it is 20 similarly uh, and y is 1050 and asterisk bracket may and y is 3.5 So again, waiting for okay for momentarily for you. If you have any question, you, you can ask me. Just type it in the chat box. Then it's fine. So after understanding this, coming to the definition part, what is a pointer? Pointer is a variable which is used to hold an address of another variable. So it, it, it means that it is used to point to another variable. So why we should use a pointer? The reason is that the power it offers to you. What kind of an power? The power of directly going to the memory level and manipulating with the memory, the contents of the memory. So that is uh, the power the, the pointer brings with uh, itself to us. So how to declare a pointer? You need to write down data type, pointer name, and should be preceded by asterisk. So if you consider this declaration, so it'll say that this is an attempt to declare a pointer to integer type. So P1 is declared as a pointer to integer type. It means that P1 is capable of holding an address of any integer type of variable. If we ask P1, P1, tera kaam kya hai bata, okay, tell me what you are meant for. What is your job? So P1 says, I am there and I am I am basically available for holding an address of any integer type of variable. So as, as uh, already discussed, there are two operators which are prominently used in uh, pointer processing, which is ampersand and the second one happens to be an asterisk and basically is an address operator. This and X means address of X and Asterisk is an indirection or dereference or value at address operator. So, if I asterisk P, it means value at address which pointer P is holding right now. So, Joby, or you can also write it like this. <clears throat> and then, okay, for me to understand, in fact, we can go back and then again talk about this. So, uh, 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 let us again do this exercise. We are assuming that the address of y is 1050 and address of x is uh, 1050. So if, if I write down and y, it means that the address of y, which is 1050, and x, which is address of x, so it is 1054. If I write down, okay, asterisk and x, is and x is 1054, and the asterisk comes the value sitting at this address. The so value sitting at this address obviously is 20. Similarly, the value sitting at address of y is the value of y, which is 3.5. So that is how it goes. So that is what I, I, I'm, I'm talking about here. Okay. Yeah. So it is recommended, my friend, when you are using a pointer, it's always better you should initialize a pointer because using an uninitialized pointer is inviting and trouble. So it, it, it comes with a uh, okay, handle with care kind of intact. So you need to initialize a pointer and how to initialize a pointer. So you can initialize a pointer after the declaration. So you simply need to write down pointer name and and variable or along with its declaration. So this is what we are doing. So yeah, a is equal to 25 at normal variable pointer or non pointer. opinion bata. We'll say non pointer. We are pushing a, a is meant for holding a value or yeah, address. So I will say A is meant for holding values and not an address. So if someone asks us, okay, an opinion about P1, what is your opinion about P1? So I will say that P1 is a pointer because in the, in the declaration, the name is preceded by asterisk. So then if someone asks us, what is the job of P1? It is used to hold the values or address. I will say that P1 is only and only meant for holding the address. It's a pointer. Pointer is nothing but an address. And then after the declaration, this is a declaration. After declaration, we are doing the initialization. So P1 will receive the address of A. 
and you can club these two statements these two statements together also so then in that case i'll say that it is declaration and initializing initialization happening simultaneously and once you are okay with this for me to better understand the concept of an pointer i want you to just look at the note the footnote please please look at that if p is a pointer then asterisk p means a value of variable to which it is pointing indirectly speaking it means the such variable itself iska matlab kya hai iska matlab is through this example we'll try to understand so x is and thoda diagrammatic representation here for a better visualization sometimes it okay uh, further helps us to understand the concept in the more better manner so do non pointer variables do pointer variables and if you look at this to koi koi puchega ki what is this this is initialization p1 is initialized with an address of x p2 is initialized with the address of y and if we have made an assumption if you look at this if we have made an assumption the address of x and y are 1000 and 1000 respectively so address of x is 1000 address of y is 1004 so at address 1000 you in a memory you will find x the value is recorded and at address 1004 you will find that the value of y is recorded and x ka value is 10 and y ka value is 20 so p1 is initialized with the address of x so p1 is holding thousand because it is an address of x p2 is holding the address of y so it is thousand and four now if i write down an expression something like this now and see someone if someone asks us mujhe bata p1 point kisko kar raha hai so can we say that p1 is pointing to x look at this p1 is pointing to which variable x y because right now it is holding an address of x p2 is pointing to which variable y because it is holding an address of y so indirectly asterisk p1 is equal to asterisk p2 plus 100 ka matlab hai asterisk p1 is nothing but x indirectly and asterisk p2 is indirectly regarding this as a y and that statement is the footnote if p is a pointer then asterisk p means a value of variable to which it is pointing jo bhi variable ko point kar raha hai uska value and indirectly speaking it means such variable itself so asterisk p1 indirectly means a variable to which it is pointing so p1 is pointing to x so it is as good as writing down x is equal to y plus 100 so this will result into the value of x getting changed to 20 plus 100 it becomes 120 abhi dekho yahan no longer the value of x is 10 it has been calculated as 120 and the value of y is still 20 now if i write down asterisk p2 is equal to asterisk p1 minus 40 so this is indirectly y is equal to x minus 40 and x ka value now is 120 so 120 minus 40 becomes 80 so the value of y now changes to 80 and now if we display x equal to percentage d y equal to percentage d asterisk p1 equal to percentage d asterisk p2 equal to percentage d x y asterisk p1 asterisk p2 asterisk p1 ka matlab x hai एस्ट्रिक P2 का मतलब Y ही है तो आउटपुट क्या आएगा अभी X का वैल्यू 120 है 80 है 120 है 80 है तो X इक्वल 120 Y इक्वल टू 80 एस्ट्रिक P1 इज 120 एस्ट्रिक P2 इज 80 इफ वी ट्राई टू डिस्प्ले द एड्रेसेस व्हिच आर देयर विद द पॉइंटर सो P1 के पास कौन सा एड्रेस पड़ा है और एड्रेस को डिस्प्ले करने के लिए जनरली हम लोग परसेंटेज Q यूज करते हैं क्योंकि एड्रेसेस आर ऑलवेज unsigned they are never negative addresses are not negative so that is the reason we use as percentage u for the purpose so we are also displaying the addresses for we to better understand ki p1 is holding 1000 and address of x is 1000 p2 is holding the address of y because address of y is 1004 now my dear friends 
if i do it like this so iska matlab hai the address which is there with p2 is getting assigned to is getting handed over to p1 so p2 ke paas kaun sa address pada hai abhi tak 1004 the same address will get assigned to p1 so p1 also will be 1004 and p2 also will be 1004 so what will be the effect ki jiska bhi address pointer ke paas aata hai wo use point karne lagta hai to iska matlab ye hai my dear friend ki now p1 also is made to start pointing to y <coughs> and p2 is already pointing to y and that is reason now iske baad mein agar maine aapse pucha ki what is asterisk p1 so you should say that sir asterisk p1 is indirectly speaking is y only now you are you, you may be wondering ki abhi y keh rahe sir iske pehle to maine kaha tha ki asterisk p1 is nothing but indirectly x hai the reason is now p1 is no longer pointing to x it has been made to point to y so that is the reason if we try to just check at the output of this you will find that x equal to 120 y equal to 80 abhi asterisk p1 ka bhi matlab y hi hai asterisk p2 also is y the reason is that both the pointers are pointing to y so asterisk p1 is 80 and asterisk p2 is also 80 so that is how it goes this is how basically okay uh the pointer works and then uh, you people know that there are two ways of calling a function pass or passing a value to the function call by value or uh, what we can say call by value or call by reference pass by value and pass by reference so these are the two ways and when it comes to pass by reference so we obviously have to have a uh, a uh, pointer dominantly playing a role and uh, the because of this pointer we get a two way effect basically the changes happening in the function also will get reflected back uh, to the calling function uh, and uh, this is something what i will uh, refer uh, right now i will not take uh, the discussion ahead the comparison and actually understanding how call by reference effect is achieved by using a pointer Uh, is something which is uh, kept aside for the next session and in the next session i'll be talking about uh, taking you people to more details of pointer then dynamic memory allocation and then followed by the uh, concept of uh, the structure and union and uh, their utilities so this is something what i have planned for the next session and the uh, comparison in between okay an array and pointer and how to uh, process the elements of an array by using a pointer all these concepts so that's all from my side uh, for the day and uh, uh, thank you very much and uh, i assume that this will be at least to some extent will be a very helpful discussion happening in front of you will add uh, some value to your understanding and i am there my dear friends okay you always uh, enjoy you know liberty of calling me personally also if you have any difficulty and I'm, we are there with you so thank you very much for the day take care and uh, okay be safe uh, that's all from my side mayuresh